going to use blue masking tape now to bring the mating surface of the flitches together. I'm just going to work at one end and I'm going to seat the tape on one side of the flitch and then pull it tight across the seam. And I'm going to slowly work my way down every couple of inches. I'm going to seat and pull. That kind of springs those edges together and they virtually disappear. We've not done this before, it's kind of cool. I can't tell you how many times I've watched the episodes on pernatology on doing this veneering. I think Neil did an excellent job. And I think if someone like me can do this, anybody can. All right, here's a split on the edge. And I believe that I can salvage that by just doing the same thing that I did in the center. Just going to hold that edge together with some tape and then I'll put veneer tape on the opposite side which should stabilize that crack and then once it gets glued down with the veneer press I think it will be gone. So I'm just gently bringing these edges together and securing them on this side with the blue tape. And this tape will later be removed. This is the side that will be glued down to the substrate. Okay, that's nice and steady. All right, so we're done with that part. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to start applying the veneer tape. That goes pretty much the same way as the masking tape. This is three hole tape and my understanding of the reason for the three holes, you notice that there is a series of larger holes down the center. That's used to help line up the tape on the center of the seam so you can see the seam or you should be able to see maybe just a hint of a seam down the center and that just helps you line up this tape. I'm basically using a small cup with a sponge tearing off little pieces of tape much like the masking tape getting the tape wet and then applying it the same way except it's kind of fragile so I'm not pulling on it and then you just run it down with your seam roller. And again, I'm not doing anything special here. This is just for me to get my feet wet and see how this process works before I commit myself on a bigger project. But it really seems to be going pretty easy. So I'm actually getting excited about what this is going to look like when it comes out of the press. I've been looking at a lot of uh, different veneers on the uh, internet and um, you can spend hours looking on joewoodworker.com. He has so many veneers. And Okay, well, quick note to self. I was having so much fun um, putting that veneer tape on that I was not paying attention to my video camera. I ran out of battery and tape. So um, I already have two panels matched and cut, ready to go. And um, unfortunately, uh, the cutting sequence was not recorded. 
And what I'm gonna do is just take a junk piece of this veneer, which is starting to split, and just go over how I did the cut. So you can imagine that it would be overlapping. And an important uh, tip that I picked up from Neil Layman's is this back end has a tendency of splitting out if you're not careful, especially on brittle woods. And this uh, wood is brittle. So I've decided that just um, I'm going to make this part of my standard operating procedure, and that is I'm always going to make this back cut to prevent that, and then cut from the front in little strokes with the veneer saw. And this tends this works good as kind of a rocking motion as you roll back, and then the piece will cut free, and then you're done. And then what I did is I just turned that around. So do the back cut, and then cut the end free. And then you're going to cut your long side, and again, do that back cut, and then starting from the front in a rocking motion with your saw, separate that off, and then you're done. You get a nice edge for your substrate. So I've already got my two uh, veneer sides cut and ready to go. We're going to go over making a platen and then gluing up the substrate and then loading up the bag. Mm -hmm.